Hi, welcome to this course on new techniques for interactive character animation. My name is Juan Llovera and I work at the Artonin Foundation. Uh, in this course, you will not see them today, but behind the scenes that ha Joe and Cecilia also have helped significantly to put this in place. Uh, today, I'll talk about uh, new techniques on character animations, and mainly I will talk about physics-based characters. Physic I f will first explain why do we need physics-based characters, also explain how you can try out easily uh, physics-based characters in a practical project that you can try. Then I'll talk about a bit about kinematic controllers, which is uh, an alternative to physics-based characters, and it's also something that you will need for certain kinds, kinds of physics-based character animation. Um, then I'll talk about how to you can create your own physics-based animation controller, and this is what will take most of the talk. And then uh, I'll explain a bit uh, what you can do to basically create your own physics-based uh, character animation controller and uh, some open challenges that are available, that are outstanding. So why do we need better interactive characters? Or why do we try to do uh, new techniques for interactive character animation? For me, my main interest in this is to create characters for virtual reality experiences. So why do we want to do uh, this? One of the main challenges in virtual reality these days is to engage with the virtual characters that we have in front of us. So uh, this is an example of a virtual reality called uh, Super Hot. Um, and as you can see, the, the, the interactive characters are still quite sketchy. And this is also a challenge not only for video game industry, but also for academia. Uh, an example of interaction that we do every day is that we synchronize with each other. For example, if we want to move a table, we do it very easily. This in research is exemplified by studies that study the behavior of two people doing, for example, the mirror game where you move and the other person needs to imitate you. So if you, if you study this, you can uh, capture the motion of two people. You can also model it. But if you want to create a virtual character that moves like you, it is still very, very difficult. So there's a general need in, in virtual reality to create new characters that work better. Uh, closer to industry, uh, there's also challenges in, in animation of characters for video games. So the typical way a video game uh, animation, a, vi a video game character works is that you give him a, an FBX reference, then you create a, a kinematic controller that does the transitions between the different animations that you have, and then you integrate this with a physics engine. The outcome, so for you to understand a bit better, the cinematic controller is where you integrate the input of the user of the gamepad, where you basically tell the character that it needs to run the run animation or the walk animation or the shoot animation. If it's a, an autonomous character, this is also at the level where the anima decisions are integrated. So you replace the gamepad by a system that makes decisions. And in this other part is where the physics of the game play a role. So this is where the character collides with the environment or receives bullets and things like this. And this last part is typically it's adjusted separately, which means that um, you first create your interactive character, you, you, you make it process the input of the user, and then you integrate the result in the, in the physical simulation. And the outcome often looks a bit like this. So as you can see, transitions are a bit sudden, and then the integration with the, with the environment collisions is pretty sketchy. So if you see, for example, here, it doesn't go forward because there's a space where the it's said that the physics cannot go forward, but there is no subtle interaction with the environment. You might be wondering where is, from what game is this? This is actually a parody. I put you here the link if you want to go check. 
but it proves the point that this kind of behavior is so common that it's basically become uh, what we expect from video games and we can actually do quite better so the idea in physics based animation is that instead of having these three steps that i talked before where you have an animated character then you have a kinematic controller and then uh, it's integrated with the game physics we could replace this with a bigger interactive physics controller and in this big block you would integrate both the input of the user which would which would create movements that are already plausible and physically consistent and also uh, integrate the collisions and the obstacles creating much uh, more believable and realistic behavior uh, the the first time i got interested in this actually was when i saw this paper by Peng and others in 2018 which was published in Seagraph which they created these very smooth kind of movements as you can see it's, uh, every time it does a kick but the movement is a bit different and it adjusts both to the po pose of the of the character and also to where the target is so when I saw this I said wow this could really be useful for virtual reality or for video games Another approach that exists is that you have a kinematic controller, which here you see as the red uh, character, and then you have a physics-based uh, character that main, mainly tries to imitate the outcome of the kinematics controller, but on the inside of a physical space with collisions and, and uh, forces. So how do we do to train a physics-based character? For this, we will use uh, um, a project that already exists, which is uh, the Marathon Environments project. You can download it in this link. It works pretty well with uh, rig characters. Uh, it's available in Unity 3D, which is one of the most accessible game engines that exist out there. So if you want to try it for your own video game prototypes, you can try it. And it's we've tried to make this modular. Uh, for this, uh, this is where Joe has helped a lot in setting this up and in trying to make this work. We have also tried it in Windows, Mac and Linux. And uh, basically, I invite you to try it out. So if in this environment you want to to oops, one sec, to train a physics-based character, you have to download the project. If you're familiar with Unity, you'll recognize this very easily. You need to basically go into the assets folder of the project and open the marathon ends. And in the, inside the scenes of folder, there is a marathon ends scene. So when you open it, you will see a quite simple scene and there is one uh, element which is called wall factory and here there's many benchmarks on physics based character animation but the two main ones that will be interested today are the two last ones which is one one is marathon backflip and it reproduces part of the the video I the, of the deep mimic character which is the one i showed you before and the other is Dricon v0 which reproduces also another paper that i will talk to you a bit more later so uh, to basically run this the only thing that you need to do is open this if you want to just try it out press play and just select the environment that you want to see if they're already trained and if you want to actually train it yourself you just need to build this scene and then uh, with the ML agents environment that comes with it, which I will also talk a bit more later, you just need to train the, with this instruction and it will basically launch the training and the learning algorithms that support it. If you want to create your own physics based character, assuming that you create your own animations and your own kinematic controller then basically what you have to do is open them again the marathons environment 
and then import the characters and the animations create the animation controller which is either it can be different there's different kinds of controllers i will talk a bit more about it later when we enter into more detail but it can be the mechanism or motion matching or others uh, then you can create the the training environment and set the degrees of freedom this is something that we have automated then you need to adjust the ragdoll features which means the size of the colliders that form the body of the physics based character and also the weights how much weight it has every part okay and then launch the training with the exactly the same steps that i showed you before uh, so to generate the training environment you can to see how this is done instead of going in marathon amps you now go to marathon controller here and you click on generate training environment from animated character okay this will look like this in the scene you will basically have to set up the head and the limbs say which are the head and the limbs of the character and then with these buttons here with these three buttons here you can generate the training environment which means you can generate the ragdoll that we learn and also uh, analyze how how much how many degrees of freedom the character must have which means how many in what directions do all the different articulations of the body move and which and th those are the directions in which the controller will need to learn how, how much force to apply at every moment and then the third button is to store this into into a, a kind of asset that you can then reuse in this project and also in your own projects this is in unity if you're familiar with unity it's called the prefab so if you're used with uh, familiarized with uh, unity you'll know that the default uh, kinematic controller in unity is called mechanim so it, this is basically how a mechanim con a mechanim character will look you will provide this uh, source reference uh, humanoid um, character with its own kinematic controller uh, which is here defined and then this automated behavior will create this mapping of this motion to the ragdoll and it will track the, the body states also for to train um, if you want to do it with a motion matching here is another example this is not included in the repository because we have used a, a plugin for unity that implements this motion matching but if you if you buy that plugin you can very easily set it up with uh, our solution this solution that is available open source now if you want to create your own physics character basically once you have created the training environment then you need to adjust the ragdoll features so here you see the the ragdoll character and these are the sons of these are all the uh, articulations where you can apply forces to decide so that the character will the physics based character will learn how to apply the forces to imitate the reference animation okay so to sum up if you want to create your own physics based character you need to first import the character that you're interested in and the animations that form it then you need to create a kinematic controller which it can be mechanism if you want to just use what's built in the unity engine or you want to put a more sophisticated controller which it can be motion matching or others that are also available i will talk about this a bit in the next section then you create the training environment and set the degrees of freedom per joint which is something that can be done automatically if you want to play with it you can also adjust it then there is a part that we have not automated which is uh, adjust the ragdoll features which is how big is the colliders for the for the arms and the legs it will be pretty much okay if you have a normal humanoid character but for the chest you will still need to adjust the sizes and uh, and the weights of each of those uh, colliders and then uh, launch the training in the same way that i told you before there is also extensive documentation or at least 
enough documentation so that people that uh, other users have tried it and have managed to train a character by themselves. So now to enter a bit more into how physics-based character works, you need to be aware, I already mentioned it a bit, but maybe now you want to, we want to look a bit more into it. So there is basically two strategies for uh, physics-based character animation. The first one is based on this video that I showed you. And it's the idea is that you have a kinematic controller, which here is the red one. And there's a physics based character that moves. So the blue one is physical in the sense that if you throw to him a, an object, it will collide and it will fall down. And you see that sometimes it, it kind of loses balance and catches up. This is different from a kinematic controller, which basically can go through walls. It never falls. There's no gravity or forces. The other approach is to do a purely physics controller, which means that at the training stage, you, you tell him which is the animation that you, the style of movement that you want to have, but there is no actual kinematic controller uh, working into the, into the synthesis. So when it's in the, in the gameplay, uh, there's no kinematic controller that you use to control the character. You control directly the physical ragdoll. So I'll talk a bit about both, but you need to be aware that these are two different strategies. Okay. So for the first kind of controllers, as I told you, there is these kinematic controllers that basically move the limbs and the body in, in, in the space, but it, it doesn't integrate with physics. So the, for this kind of kinematic controllers, the classical solution was state machines. So the idea of state machines is that if we organize animations in loops, so one loop for walking, one loop for running, etc., or in one shot animations, like one single shot animation for jump, we can define those as different states and then define transitions between the states depending on user input. So if you are idling, if you have a character that is idling and you press forward, then you make a transition to the animation state where the character is walking and you play the animation loop. And when you, if you're walking and you press the jump button, then you make a transition to the jump loop. Uh, so this has, is widely used still today in, in video games. Uh, the advantage is that it allows for high level input, like you can tell the character what to do pressing buttons. It's quite robust when it works, it works. There's several implementations available in Unreal and in Unity, which are the most popular game engines that are readily available. In practice, though, uh, there is a serious drawback, which is that uh, once you start having several animations, you can, end up with, you can end up with too much animation. So here is an example of an animation where uh, everything is clean and it looks nice and it's very well organized, uh, but it can easily become kind of a mess where you have transitions in many directions, you have too many animations and debugging this, adjusting this and making it work once you're in this situation becomes harder and harder and harder. So to de deal with this challenge, there was a technique called motion matching, which was proposed, I think it was in 2016 by people working at Ubisoft. And the basic idea was that if we pre-process the animations involved uh, into the, uh, that normally would be animation loops, here instead of doing small loops, what we do is that we create an entire database of motion matching and we can pre-process and analyze it in order to see basically the distance for one animation, for every pose, for every frame of the animation to any other frame or any other pose of any other animation. This means that you can transition from one animation to the other at any moment. So the, the, 
the algorithm manages to find for every moment if you're in a certain position and you want to turn left you it manages to to find out how to basically move left going towards the animation that is closer to the current pose this the result of this is that it's uh, it makes for a very very fluid locomotion movement in the sense that the, the animations always move from motion from motion capture data to motion capture data and everything looks smooth um, there's these days this has become very popular so it's already available uh, pretty excessively uh, for example for Unreal and Unity 3D it's not built in but it's available in as plugins which are not very expensive one of the drawbacks is that it does not compose to well animations in the sense that if you want for example for locomotion it's perfect but if you want to combine animations like you want to have you have a shooting animation and a sitting on a chair animation and you want someone to sit shoot while he's sitting on a chair this will not work it cannot combine this the different animations uh, and also a significant technical drawback is that because you need to store all the movement and also all the transitions and uh, it ends up creating a huge amount of data needed here i have put uh, the implementations available and the original um, proposal if you're interested so to one of the things that has been proposed more recently is to uh, improve it with um, learn motion matching and here we start to enter into this topic that has influenced all the improvements in character animation in the last five years which is the arrival of machine learning to this field and it has basically now it works in practical terms and it's transforming the entire field of character animation so learn motion matching uh, is the first example we'll see of using machine learning for uh, to improve an animation controller and here the idea is that uh, something that we can do is that instead of taking this huge database we can create a, a neural network which learns to basically imitate the, the database in the sense that when you give him the input that you would give to the database it outputs the same answer or the same pose that the database would answer this works pretty well and it gives really smooth movement just like motion matching the main difference is that the database is really really small okay this was the first example of uh, how deep learning is influencing kinematic controllers there's also so this one was specifically for one specific thing which was to reduce the memory needed in motion matching there is also other work which i will not talk in detail but uh, if you're interested in the slides of the course there's extra slides that i'm not showing now because i don't have enough time where you can basically have an, an update uh, about uh, what is possible to do today with uh, kinematic controllers and machine learning methods. Uh, some of the things that you can do is give some awareness of the environment to the character in the sense that if you want it to sit on a chair, it can learn the size of the chair and where to sit and be aware of how to plan the movement so that the the, mov the movement of sitting is smooth and effective uh, more recently even there's there's movements very sophisticated like how to deal with the uh, asynchronous movements where you have for example a character that needs to play a bounce a ball and at the same time turn and move around to dock a, a, another character and at the same time do this integrating the input of the user these are the papers that do these things and I, I also know that this author Stark is uh, publishing a no, uh, another improvement on kinematic controllers in this year's SIGGRAPH 2021. So maybe you want to take a look. 
so now you have a basic idea of what are kinematic controllers and the two main ones which are state machines and motion matching another thing that you will not need to understand what i'm explaining today but if you want to uh, basically build your own physics based character animation you'll need to be comfortable with uh, basically you need to be at least know that this exists and ideally be comfortable manipulating those uh, character animations is defined in poses and these poses are combinations of articulations that each has a 3d rotation so here you have a 3d rotation here you have another 3d rotation here you have another 3d rotation etc and a character pose is defined as a combination of these 3d rotations so you need to be aware of this and this is generally dealt with something called quaternions and um, which is a, a generalization of complex numbers and it can be useful to know about it again to understand the basic ideas and to train a character with an existing algorithm you will not need it but if you want to create your own physics-based character animation controller you will probably need to get into this apart from this quaternion algebra something that is also useful to know is the decompositions in swing and twist so a swing let me if you see my, me uh, a swing is this kind of movement and a twist is this kind of movement so this can when you work in this with this algebra it's pretty easy to decompose movement in in these components um so if you if you want to look into this i'll give you materials later to basically dig more uh, in detail another thing that you should be aware of is inverse kinematics so in the same way that we had kinematic controllers to make transitions between animations there are algorithms that do kinematic uh, calculations to in order that an end effector matches a given position so here for example the user can move the ball and interactively this is calculated the position of the 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 different rotation angles of rotation of this uh, of this articulated robot are calculated uh, so basically how it works this is one example of a kin inverse kinematic algorithm it, it's a recursive algorithm and every time you calculate the angle and you cancel it and then progressively you converge so these are kind of older examples of how in kinematic controllers work on simpler cases with th that didn't deal with pre-existing animations but it's very useful to first learn a bit how this works in order to be familiar with the kinds of operations that you end up doing when you deal with physics-based character animation so if, you, if you're interested here there is an entire 15 weeks course on animation foundations and there is a detailed uh, if we go in detail in in 3d rotations direct and inverse kinematics and these kinds of of things uh, it's all available for free and you can just explore it freely so now that we have talked a bit about kinematic controllers for animations but also for to move limbs by themselves another difference that you need to be very aware of is what's the i already talked about with it but uh, now i insist a bit more is the difference between rig characters which are generally animated with kinematic movements and kinematic controllers and ragdolls which are generally moved with physics which means with forces and they have masses and they have inertia and they have uh, gravity and collisions and these kind of things so to understand this you need to be aware you probably are aware already but i have to insist when you use physics based character animation you are doing a physical simulation so in games in and virtual reality physics is a simulation and you can manipulate it arbitrarily so here you have an example of a video game called totally accurate battle simulator so here there was a collision and the mammoth ended up flying so as you can imagine this in real life either we already we still had mammoths it could not happen but because the programmer has manipulated the masses and the forces that are applied in the collisions this can happen 
um, something that happened with the arrival of deep learning in the same sense that deep learning has affected how kinematic controllers are designed and implemented it has also affected how ragdolls move so until i would say five years ago the only use of ragdolls in video games was when the character would fall it would do you would have a kinematic controller and when the character would fall you would switch to a ragdoll and then the character would, would fall and integrate the collisions with falling on the floor and the impact of the rock and etc this changed radically when it was showed that with deep learning we could learn how to apply forces to get a certain effect so for example in this simulation let me turn off my video one sec you can see how the character has learned to move forward and to not fall, fall despite the obstacles that you see here so this was one of the first examples where we said hey oh maybe this deep learning thing can be used to train ragdolls to move okay the problem here is that clearly this movement is completely dysfunctional so it was not useful for the for video games or for virtual reality because the user obviously expects movements which are much smoother but this was a big deal because it you you basically showed that the that the animation worked uh, that the physics based controller could work only by telling basically this system how it works is that you're basically telling this controller to don't fall and to move forward and you put it into a physical simulation and it learns to move by itself what then happened is that in not only they told they to move forward and not fall it also told them to imitate an animation that already existed and then it learned to move in a way that was more acceptable and more and closer to what users would expect so how do we do this how do create so now we have seen what are kinematic controllers we have mentioned 3d rotations and inverse kinematics and we have also discussed what is the difference between a ragdoll and a kinematic character now we can move to to a tool that is very much used in to train physics-based uh, character animation controllers which is reinforcement learning this is a key tool to use to then the basic notions that you need to be aware about this will then be useful to train your characters and make them behave like you want so now i'll talk i'll explain a bit the main ideas of reinforcement learning and how you can use them to create physics-based character animation controllers so the idea of reinforcement learning actually is pretty old it's something that comes from behavioral psychology and it was uh, maybe the first implementation into a robotic system was this uh, character from, from this machine from invented by shannon which was also the father of information theory and basically it was a uh, a robotic mouse that would learn to find the exit to the labyrinth in in any configuration of the labyrinth so you could move the walls in this in this labyrinth and the and the mouse would by trial and error and progressively find its way out so how does this work the basic scheme about how does this work is the agent so here is the mouse in our case it will be the the controller that learns to apply the forces to the articulated uh, ragdoll make some actions so here the actions can be move forward move backward move to the left etc and then the environment gives him a state which can be the state can be you move to the left or now you're in this position or it can be you hit the wall and a reward and the reward the basic idea is the same idea of the carrot and the stick you either if you want if the agent is doing something that you want it to learn to do 
to give him a positive reward like if it was a carrot if you wanted to learn to not do certain things when it does certain things you give him a stick and you give him a negative reward this is the basic idea so that makes it very useful to use in a in a physics based uh, animation setup because you can basically make the simu the physical simulation decide on the states and on the rewards so you don't need to have a huge data set or anything like this you just set up your environment and you make it train um, so the main components of uh, of reinforcement learning are the the agent which there was the mouse here it's this green thing sorry this blue cube and uh, then the actions which in the case of the mouse is moving forward moving left etc uh, but in other cases it can be uh, moving the for physics based animation it will be applying a force to a rotation then there are the reward which will depend on the state of the of the agent so uh, for example if the physics based character you want it to reach a target so the reward of a positive reward for reaching the target can only be matched when you're near to the target so here it's the same thing in this in this this is a computational simulation of the same idea of the mouse that needs to find the exit here we have this blue mouse that needs to find this green exit and it will move around and depending on if it hits the wall it will get a negative reward if it matches the target it will get a, a positive reward so um, the reward is the short-term action okay and uh, what the character needs to learn is the policy which means by receiving rewards in different states it will learn which are certain states that are more valuable where it's more likely to receive a positive reward and which are the actions that create this value so the value is depending only on the state but you generally need a bigger representation for example to combine the state and the action because obviously if you're near to the target this value has more value this position has more value but it has more value associated to doing the right action which is to match the target this this simulation is available as a as a project open source so if you want to play with it and get acquainted with the basics of reinforcement learning it's a very useful project to get the basics here is a textbook reference which is basically the reference in reinforcement learning and the different algorithms and methods can, 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 that exist and about this uh, project there is also an online demo which i will try to show you now so let me load it here so here you see the character is trying to find the target and once it finds it it will always move ahead to the same position we can start a new environment and again the character starts and or even a, a bigger one and you see at the beginning it will it's not finding it and progressively it will now exp it explores another part and progressively it will find the right environment so if you want to learn a bit about how reinforcement learning works this is a good toy project to explore it so the main benefit that reinforcement learning provides is that it transforms short-term rewards which is the feedback that the mouse gets when it moves or the feedback that the physical simulation gives us when we apply a force to a rotation into long-term values which is for the mouse it's the path to apply or for the character it's the forces to apply for every pose in order to go forward or to match a target animation or to uh, jump over an obstacle 
the only difference that we have with the toy project that I showed you and deep reinforcement learning, which is the kind of reinforcement learning that we use for physics-based character animation, is that in physics-based character animation, a state is a set of rotations of the character, which can be up to 50 degrees of freedom or more, and also a position in space, a rotation in space, a distance to a target. So all these, all these uh, states or all these variables are continuous, which means that a state is basically infinite because any, kind, any rotation value is a state. This does not fit into a table, so we cannot store value in a table that combines states and actions like the grid of the labyrinth that we saw before, which means that we need to have a more abstract representation of the state of the system. And this is where the deep comes in, in the deep reinforcement learning. It basically tells you, it basically builds an abstract representation of the state of the physical system and it informs the reinforcement learning algorithm on uh, what is the state that it is to then learn what are the right actions that it needs to do. So another, maybe the, the most interesting property of reinforcement learning for our goal here is that it's remain domain agnostic in the sense that you can design rewards for pretty much any kind of objective. So we saw before the character moving in a strange way. This was because we only had given him a reward uh, that was geometric in the sense we were only asking him move forward and that's it. But it could, it had no example of how to move or no reward to move in a certain way, which meant it learned to move in a way that was physically possible but not physically plausible and but it did learn to move forward and not fall so this is a more geometric reward you can also give him a style based reward like if you have an animation that is looking happy when it walks then you could ask the the reinforcement learning algorithm to learn to move like that reference animation you can also give it all sorts of rewards, like for example, a bio more biologically related one, which would be go there and pick that object, for example, if it was food. If you want to learn more about reinforcement learning and deep reinforcement learning, the backbone that we use in this Marathon Environments project is ML Agents, which is a uh, project that has been developing widely in the last two or three years. It's very useful to train agents in Unity. It has many examples, it's open source and it's free. And, it, and if you're more interested into an academic approach to reinforcement learning and deep reinforcement learning, the Sutton and Barton uh, book is the main reference for this. So I, I invite you to explore more about this if you're interested in understanding better the details about this thing. Otherwise, you can just use reinforcement learning as a tool and you will need to learn a couple things to use it for physics-based character animation, but you don't need to dig into what are the precise algorithms that the reinforcement learning system uses or things like this. So how do we use reinforcement learning for a purpose? So we want to do physics-based character animation, so the actions are the forces that we apply on the joints. The other aspect that we also want to take into account is that we need a reward and observations of the states of the world. So we, we know uh, how the agent can learn when to obtain this reward. We also need to adjust the physical environment. With this, we like to, it's actually here where you have lots of details that you need to take into account about how the physical simulation runs and the physical parameters that you can adjust. And it's also generally what is less explained in the papers on the topic. And then you adjust, you need to adjust the training scenario, which generally means when does the training episode finish and we restart everything and we re restart training. This is a, a physics based character animation controller 
generally learns to move with many 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 trials so you need to define well when it's over and you cannot learn anything else so now i will try to cover these three things and then basically you'll know how to design your own physics based character animation controller so the first thing we need to do is design a reward so here we have several strategies available the first one we can call it rise up and walk which translated would mean if you fall you get a negative score and the episode ends if you go forward you get a positive score in small increments so that you continuously want to go forward an example of this is the character that i showed you before uh, where basically it moved in a weird way but it did not fall down and walk which was already good enough for a purpose Another option that you have is a principle which we could call follow that person. So in this case, what you will get is that translated into, into numbers. This means that if the rotation of my joint is similar to the rotation of a given animation, then this is good. A typical example that you have is the Deep Mimics paper that I mentioned before and parts of it the, the part on motion imita on imitation of a reference animation is also in this marathon environment uh, so if you had give him a reference animation which is to do a backflip the physics-based character will also do a backflip although because it's a physics animation it may fall down and then the next step, which is basically what is going on now in the efforts to develop physics-based character animation controllers, is that one physics-based controller can work for any kind of animation. So, so then this means that you do something similar to the previous step, but you need to train it in a way that basically makes it look good for any animation that you give it. So now you start having many, many different animations stored in huge databases which are then used to train a physics-based animation controller so as a reminder as i told you before there's two kinds of strategies to implement a physics-based character animation controller one is to integrate the kinematic controller inside the physics controller and the other is to create a pure standalone physics controller with no physics based controller so this first strategy started with a paper that is generally mentioned as Dricon, which is the short name that is in the title. And here what they do is that they have a kinematic controller and the physics, basically the only need it needs to do only is to learn to match that uh, pose of the kinematic controller for any input that the controller can provide. So it can be very different animations or it can be just a simple walk animations like I'm showing here. The other strategy, which is from the reference paper that started with this reference paper that I talked to you about earlier, which is Deep Mimic. Uh, you train using a reference animation, which it can be a walking or a back, or a back uh, a jumps of different kinds. Uh, but at inference state, you don't really use that uh, reference animation or that kinematic controller. Um, basically, the physics-based control, uh, controller is specialized in generating that movement. And then if that movement involves uh, targets or matching positions or kicking an object or things like this, you can add extra rewards when you train the physics-based controller to match those extra targets. So in addition to the reward, which I described earlier, you also want to provide the learning agent with observations. So you, for the kinematic controller, typically you want the pose and the joint velocities are observations. You, you want the agent to know in what pose is the character at the moment so it can basically apply the forces to go to the following pose of the movement and then if other observations are added they're generally related to the movement because there is already a kinematic controller behind 
that basically takes care of the logic of related with the input of the user or matching targets or things like this. For an interactive physics controller with no kinematic controller, you have those same, but then you want to add additional perceptions, which are task dependent. So if you want a character to throw a ball to a target, you need, for example, to uh, tell him where is the target or at least in what directions and at what distance is the target so, and also if it hit the target so we can learn by trial and error to apply the right force so that the ball hits the target also something that is done in deep mimic and it can also be done if you want is that if you want to perceive relevant aspects of the environment for example the obstacles or different or other aspects that are let's say of high dimension and you cannot just store give literally to the character to the agent is that you can build a separate neural network to contain a representation of these of these other things in practice you also need aware that if you increase the observation vector the the training slows down at least in the in the framework that we've been exploring and that i've talked to you about so if you increase the observation vector your training will take more and more time which is kind of challenging because it can get very long yeah. then the following thing that you need to be aware of is how to adjust the physical environment so in our framework we have a reference animation which is controlled by a kinematic controller for example which in this case is the violet thing and then you have the green lines, which are the ragdolls of the, that imitate this pose. And then the, the blue character is only a mapping of this ragdoll to, to a kinematic character with, a, with a skin in order that we can basically use it in a normal video game environment where we all in general want skin characters. So this correspondence between the kinematic or the animation reference the kinematic controller or the animation reference and the um, the things that apply the forces that the motors that apply the forces in the different articulations needs to be established so in deep mimics what they do is that depending on the on the movement that they want to imitate they manually set up the reference uh, motors and they adjust them so that it works okay in Dricon which is the other paper that I talked to you about which they they follow a kinematic controller they do ki a kind of complicated mapping of joints of the kinematic controller to motors of the ragdoll in our case here basically we've done a one-to-one -one mapping which means that for every articulation you get a motor and the degrees of freedom, which means the directions in which the, the motor can apply forces, are calculated just parsing a pre-existing animation along one to get some variability of the movement. And then this translates into the movement of the, the, the degrees of freedom in which the forces can be applied. Another question that is still not settled in the, in the literature is, if the, the learning agent should learn the forces to apply or target rotations so here there's diverse opinions some people think that it's better to have the reinforcement learning agent directly learn the forces to be applied sometimes it can be with uh, some kind of limits or filters so that they are not infinite other people use something called the uh, partial derivative controller which is basically a method by which you give the motor the position the rotation in which you want it to be and then it calculates the force based on this to put the the force that the it needs to apply to match that target position so you there both methods are used it's not clear yet in our case uh, we use PD controllers but we are still exploring what is the best option. It's still not completely settled. Uh, you, because you, their code is there, you can of, of course play with it and try and see what you prefer. Mm. 
in practice, the in the same way I told you that the space of observations, if it grows, it significantly slows down the training. For the space of actions, there's not that much of an impact. And you, if you're in f with 50 degrees of freedom, because every joint can have one, two, or three degrees of freedom, and you're pretty good. It, it works fine. It, there's no much problem. Uh, something that is also sometimes applied, especially when the reinforcement learning learns directly to apply forces, is that you either smooth the forces applied or you do low pass filtering so that there is a bit less jerk because otherwise you would be applying sometimes very strong forces and this would not look good basically on the behavior. Another element that you need to consider when you set up your physics training, your physical environment for training, is that it is whether you need to add noise and obstacles or other elements so that the training has more variability and then the controller is more robust. So sometimes uh, for training, you can use generative terrains that generate infinite variations at the same time, uh, all the time. So you have obstacles of within a range, but that are never the same. So it doesn't learn a particular set of obstacles, but obstacles in general then obviously you will also need to add observations so these obstacles are actually perceived so it learns how to react to those and sometimes you also add noise in how the user the the input of the user is used as training data so because you want the character to not only be physically plausible but also react to the user if you want to train it with more variability in the data of the user input then you can add noise there and then another thing that is generally done is once you have trained your character to look if it's basically robust and also if it looks physically good in terms of physical simulation is you throw things at it and if it kind of compensates or falls in a way that makes sense to our physical intuitions then this is a positive symptom that the physics-based character animation controller that you've develop, developed is a good one. So the, the last idea that I want to explain to you is how to adjust the training scenario. So to create your own physics-based animation controller, a key factor is how you train it. And one of the things that are simple to set up and that actually improve a lot the training is how you adjust your training scenario. And here a key idea also introduced in Deep Mimic was early termination. So the idea is that if the, the, the trial is going wrong, just stop, okay? If the horse is dead, just unmount. Translated, it means that if your physics-based uh, ragdoll, if your ragdoll is already very far from the reference animation, or if the head of your character has fallen down, or if something has gone wrong, basically stop and restart okay this very simple idea it's very easy to implement also uh, is actually a very good idea for different reasons and two of them is that it, it immediately allows you to exclude a big chunk of the space of possible actions because all the actions that involve a character being on the floor you just directly don't explore them anymore and also it avoids situations where you have a character uh, different rewards that compete with each other for example you could be trying to imitate the reference animation in terms of rotations but if the character is on the floor trying to imitate the the, the animations it doesn't make any sense so you don't want your agent to learn to imitate in a, in a situation where it doesn't make any sense that it's still training because you don't want the character to be on the floor you want it to be moving so this is two of the reasons why this is a good idea. And this idea is actually fairly recent, but it's actually almost universally adopted. So this was, a, as I said, uh, proposed in Deep Mimic, okay? And it's pretty much in every paper that I've seen on, on physics-based character animation since then. Other training scenarios aspects to consider is the neural networks, like what is the training length, how many steps do you want it to train, 
uh, what's the size of the neural network, what is the reinforcement learning algorithm used. This you can of course explore. There's in this solution that I've talked to you about, there are several examples available. But uh, you can also just use what is already available and you will get good results. Something that you also might want to explore is if you train a character to only match a certain amount of animations or you want it to go for a much larger set of animations and if you train it on the same terrains always or you want to use different terrains so it learns to deal with obstacle or different kinds of surfaces so finally what is still not solved in physics based character animation now you know how to train a, a physics based character you know how to create your own physics based character with an existing uh, physics based animation controller and I also discussed a bit what are the main things to consider if you want to implement your own physics based character animation controller so now what can we do with this here I've put you the main papers that you might want to look into um, the two first ones are the ones I've been talking the one the deep mimic was the one that kicked my interest in this area it's very nice paper and the Dricon is the one that introduced the idea that we can have a physics based character that follows or imitates a kinematic controller and these three three ones that I put below basically they try to generalize this in different ways uh, to have a physics based character animation controller that can work either with any uh, kinematic controller or with any animation of a huge database of animations or that it can you do a two learnings two, uh, you do learning in two steps you first train specialized physics based controllers for specific animations like one for walking one for jumping one for backflip etc and then you train uh, a more generic physics based animation controller that can actually generate all those movements with a, with a sp special input that says which which movement you want to generate in terms of rewards so the deep mimic is the one that i told you it adds uh, reward terms for any of the conditions so imitate the movement of the reference animation do not fall uh, match the target etc dricon is pretty much similar uh, but more focused on the motion part because it, there's a kinematic controller in motor primitives this doesn't really apply maybe the novelty is in scale drive where instead of adding the animations they multiply them and it says that uh, they basically it helps with difficult motions also uh, the in terms of re early termination the the scale drive what's interesting is that it doesn't create ad hoc options for early termination in the sense of in deep mimic as a, as i explained bef before if the character falls to the ground you terminate if the movement is too far from the reference you terminate in scale drive they link the early termination and the um, and the reward if any reward term is too low you terminate this is new i don't i haven't tried it myself i'm not sure if it if it works in general but it's certainly an interesting direction to explore so what's the ultimate goal so if you want to explore this area you probably want to know where this thing might be headed so in my view in my view for this first strategy of having a kinematic controller integrated in the physics controller the goal is to have a universal physics controller that works for any character and that is not that specific which means that you can put uh, motion matching on it you can put uh, a hierarchical state machine like mechanism on it or you can put a very strange animation like a backflip or something doing tricks on a skateboard that are insane and it will still work to have the same physics based controller to imitate any movement and to not need to retrain for every every time you want to add a new kind of movement okay 
in this case of course much of the burden is translated to the kinematic controller so if you want to explore this direction i also suggest you read into more detail the references that i put into the slides that i have not taught in the video on the other uh, aspect if you if you are more interested into the purely physics controller with no kinematic controller i think the goal is to find a training procedure that allows combining different movements into a unique controller and something that is not really yet there is to allow combining multiple goals in the for example what i was telling you before the example of the character that sits down while shooting this is something that is really really difficult to do or i don't know how to do with a purely physics based controller today okay promising directions it's basically what i already told you before uh, these papers that i've mentioned have shown that you can actually have one physics based controller working with different kinematic controllers and with a huge database um, there's also every time more and more sophisticated kinematic controllers this has also evolved a lot in the last recent years so maybe combining these two can basically give us a perfect solution for video games and for uh, virtual reality for physics-based controllers uh, there's this idea of distillation to have combined specialized uh, physics controllers into a common super physics controller there's also been proposed by the same author than deep mimics to uh, develop more abstract uh, representations for the learning and this basically allows the character to combine different animations when it synthesizes a movement so for example to uh, walk in different styles to reach a target there's also a paper submitted which is uh, available on online but it's still not published on a peer-reviewed conference which tries to completely abstract the the design of the rewards using a gain style discriminant uh, so globally uh, the the question here is can we completely get rid of the kinematic controller because we have a physics-based controller that is flexible enough to deal with many animations to combine them and to uh, learn from reference animations and to integrate rewards of different kinds so to, that we don't need to design them per task if you want to know about the resources if you want to use any of those there is these resources that are here available um, and now basically it's your turn so if you want to develop your own physics based controller the main challenge that you need to think about is how do we get a rain deep reinforcement learning agent to learn to move in the physical environment that you provide him and with the user input that you want it to react so the first step would be to add movement related rewards optionally you can also add rewards for different goals particularly if you're not uh, using a kinematic controller inside the loop so you can add rewards for mimicking a reference animation for matching a position in space like reaching a target to strike a target or to throw a ball into a given to a position you must also add observations that help learn how to do this because a blind character doesn't learn much this can in include terrain observations distance to a target then you need to adjust the physics environment so that it learns in the way you want so this is tricky and it can involve many many details and to start with this i invite you to start from a solution that works and then progressively modify it to adjust it to what you prefer and then you need to adjust the training setup and particularly the early termination criteria how when should an episode end to start again when when do we reset if you train it the outcome that it will have or the idea an idea to have to know if your training is going well is that the reward will increase and it will increase with this shape at the beginning you will get bigger increases and then smaller ones and the episode length because of this idea that uh, early termination kicks in and then 
basically the episode is really short the episode should fo follow a similar a similar shape if you use the project that i've talked to you about a typical training will go between 12 hours and 36 hours depending on how strong is your machine but if you are training for more than three days something went wrong basically in terms of implementations for the the ones based on kinematic controllers this started with recon the reference paper did not provide the code but we have made it available in this marathon environments project and it both it works both for state machines and for motion matching it looks like this for the physics based controller it started with the mimic the implementation is available so the source code the paper came with source code it's simulated in in bullet which is maybe not so useful to make a video game but it's very much used to do physical simulations and in this same project we have re-implemented the part that deals with imitating emotion the part that is not re-implemented is the part that deals with learning to match a target and so now basically you have all the elements that you need to create your own physics-based character animation controller so it's your turn if you have questions, please do not hesitate coming to the Q&A session or write me an email to this address. Thanks.